Welcome. This time on Woodworks, we'll make this Japanese-inspired sitting bench. Hi, I'm David Mark. Welcome to Woodworks. On this episode, we'll show you how to make this sitting bench. With its curved seat and carved columns, it's reminiscent of ancient Asian artifacts. Crafted from three slabs of solid maple, the striking simplicity of the bench is enhanced by a carved purple heart disc at the top of each leg. The design of the seat's soft compound curves and the gentle sweep of the legs project an Asian influence, which gives the piece a timeless appeal. This is the prototype for our Japanese-inspired sitting bench. Now this is made out of some poplar, an inexpensive wood. We took some thinner boards and glued those together to get a thick plank here. Now these will mimic the actual slabs of maple that we'll use for our project. Now the advantage of working with an inexpensive wood like this is that we get to mock it up and to really get a sense of the piece full scale. Also, it's an excellent opportunity to work out the joinery make sure that we can get a good strong joint to attach our seat to our legs. If you love wood, you gotta have one of these in your backyard. This is my wood shed. This houses a collection of wood I've put together actually over the past 20 years. It's always a sense of excitement walking in here and taking a look at all these big slabs of wood. Now for today's project, we're gonna be working with this particular slab here. This is a piece of big leaf maple. You might actually recognize it more by its leaf, which is the Canadian symbol. Now this particular slab has got some nice color and figure to it, but it's also got a nice healthy thickness to it, about two and a half inches thick, which is gonna work really well for today's project, our sitting bench. Now one of the reasons we chose this particular slab of wood is because it has so much interesting character and color and figure in it. A good way to expose some of that figure is by taking a hand plane and just use a little bit of a scrubbing action on the surface. Now we can see this one's got some really beautiful burl pattern going on in here. As we get down into this middle section, it's got a really interesting curl figure that I like. And down here, there's some nice swirls and some color patterns around this bark inclusion. Now whenever you take on a project like this sitting bench, You've got to make some choices as to which cuts of wood to leave in and which cuts of wood to leave out. Now, I would definitely cut out around this knot over here, but I wouldn't be put off by this bark inclusion. The reason being is that when we do this sculpture on it, we could probably carve this away and it's not even going to show in the finished project. We've marked out this center section for our seat, and this will work really well. It's got the length and the width we need. And this section down here is going to work really nicely for our leg. So we'll use the circular saw and rough cut these slabs to length, and then we can take them inside to the shop where we'll do our final milling. Once we rough cut our slab, we clean the wood with a steel brush to remove any loose debris. Then use the bandsaw to cut away the knots in the wood. Now that we've got a rough blank cut out of our slab, the next thing we wanna do is get these surfaces flat and the corners 90 degrees square. Now this is really important because we need nice true reference points to do our joinery. So we'll start by getting this surface flat and we'll just put some chalk marks on here and then we'll make a few passes over the joiner. When we've got the bottom of the slab flat, we reference that face against the fence and then run an edge of the slab over the jointer. Next, we run our stock through the planer. Using our flat face as a reference, we cut a parallel surface on the opposite side. Now we're ready to take our stock to the table saw and cut it to size. Now that our leg stock is cut to length, that gives us the dimensions that we need. And since we've done our milling, our surfaces are nice and flat, our corners are 90 degrees, and that gives us the true reference points that we need so that next we can start the process of making our joinery. 
Now we're ready to make our mortises and tenons. For a bench seat, you have two templates. This one's got a curved profile to it, which will give us the shape of our seat. Now this other one that we'll actually use first has the straight line on the bottom. Now hold this up against the prototype, and you can see that this straight line actually creates two wedge shapes that we've already cut off. Now what's important about that is it sets up our legs at an angle. And by flaring these out at an angle, that gives us the aesthetic that we're after. But also, another important factor is it establishes these legs at a 90 degree corner to the bottom of our seat. Now that's important because it's going to really tremendously simplify the joinery process. We use the bandsaw to cut away the wedges we marked on the bottom of our seat. This next process is going to be a little bit tricky. Now I've used the bandsaw to cut off a wedge on the bottom of our seat, and now we need to get this flat. This is easily accomplished on the joiner, but what's a little bit different is that we need to rock this forward, and we can do this pretty easily by just putting some pressure on the front of it. Now by making several passes on the joiner, we can get this surface dead on flat for our joinery. Let's take a look at the joinery on our bench seat. Now we're using mortise and integral tenon construction. So we've got two integral tenons on our legs, so we need to cut matching mortises on this flattened wedge cut on the bottom of our bench seat. Now to do that, we're going to use this mortising template. This will just make it easier and more accurate. We've also got this stop glued on to the end, which is going to reference off the end of our seat. So all we have to do is match up our pencil marks on the center line then we can clamp this in place, and then we can take our plunge router with our flush bearing bit and route out our mortises. The bearing on the bit just needs to follow the template, which makes this a quick, easy, and accurate way to cut our mortises. Then we use the template to guide our chisel so we can square up the rounded edges left by the router bit. That will give us mortises to match the square tenons that we'll make next. We've got the mortises cut in our bench seat, so now we're ready to cut the tenons in our leg stock. We use this curved template to show you that we're going to be doing some curved shaping on the inside of the leg. Now because of this curved shaping, we actually need to compensate and shift our tenons towards the outside of our leg stock. We use the ripping blade on the table saw. We've got our fence set up at 5 eighths of an inch, so we'll begin by cutting the outside cheeks for our tenons. With our template traced on the top of our leg, we cut the outside cheek of our tenon. Next, we adjust the fence to cut the inside cheek of the tenon. Then, we reset the table saw and make some notch cuts across the end grain. Those various cuts that we just made define the boundaries of our two tenons, which are right here. Now, we'll use the crosscut sled and cut away around the parameters of the shoulders and we'll get rid of all this extraneous wood, leaving our two tenons. Because our tenon is offset, we need to remember to check the height of the blade when cutting our cheeks. We also adjust the blade height when cutting the shoulders of our tenons. Now that we're done making our joinery, we've dry clamped our legs to the bottom of our bench seat. Now next up, we need to make these angle cuts on the bottom of these legs so that when we've glued up our bench, it's going to sit level on the floor. Now this is a great time to do this because we can use the top of the bench seat while it's still straight as a reference point. So we'll take a straight edge and slide it into place, and then we'll reference off the top, come down about 21 inches, and we'll make some pencil marks here. Then we can go to the bandsaw and make these angle cuts. Our top and bottom templates give us the dimensions for our legs. So we use those measurements to lay out the taper that we'll make along the sides. Then we go back to the bandsaw and cut out the shape. On this example of our Japanese style sitting bench, 
you can see that one of the key design elements is the sculpted purple heart disc. This is a really nice design element. Now we don't want to just glue this onto the side, so we've actually cut away some wood for this disc to fit into. We use another template with our flush bearing bit, this time set at 3 16 of an inch to make the recess. With an accurate cut, the purple heart will hold firmly into our legs. Next, we use the bandsaw to cut each disc out of some purple heart stock. We've got our purple heart discs that we've already roughed out on the bandsaw. Now we need to make them perfectly symmetrical and identical. We're going to do this on the disc sander with this really cool jig that we've made. This thing's got a pivoting arm with a pin fixed in place. We've got a hole that we've drilled into the purple heart. This is going to mount onto the pin. And it's going to slide up against this adjustable stop which controls the depth of the cut. So the purple heart it's going to rotate up against the disc sander. And the disc sander will cut away the excess material and create a perfectly symmetrical disc. Next up, we want to sculpt this into a really nice dome shape and give it some hand carved texture. Now you could use some hand carving tools to achieve that, but Purple Heart is a really dense hard wood. So for the sake of efficiency, we're going to use this air-powered die grinder with a carbide ball mill in it. This tool is really efficient for sculpting really dense hard woods. And you might ask yourself, how are we going to hold this little guy in place while we sculpt it? Well, we're going to use this piece of poplar that we've cut a recess into. We put some double stick tape on the back. We'll press this down into place. And that'll hold this thing really steady while we take the die grinder and sculpt it into a really nice dome shape. We're just finishing up carving with our small bit on the die grinder. Now our purple heart disc is looking good. So now we're ready to start carving the legs and the seat for a sitting bench. Now we're ready to sculpt our curved legs and seat. It's the curved profile of our seat and our legs that gives our Japanese inspired sitting bench a true sense of elegance. Now to achieve those curves actually takes several steps. So we'll start by taking the bench seat template and making some layout lines. Then we'll take this to the bandsaw and rough cut away the top portion of our seat. On the bottom of the seat, we'll make a cut a portion of the way in. But we'll stop here around the mortises, and that way we can keep this flat spot and maintain the tight fit of our joinery. Next, we're going to be sculpting our curves into our legs. Now we have these templates that we've made, and this gives us the curve profile that we need to sculpt away. We've used these templates to mark out some pencil lines on the top and bottom of our legs, and then we've connected these curves down the side here and made some X's. This will show us the material that needs to be carved away. Now, of course, you could always carve this by hand using some hand carving tools, but that's kind of a slower way to go. We're going to be using this tool. This is an angle grinder with a power sculpting blade mounted in it. Now we're going to be using this tool to make short work of carving away this wood and getting that curved shape into our leg. Using the angle grinder, it's a good idea to make even strokes. After shaping the inside, we flip the stock and rough shape the outside of our legs. Then we use the same process to rough out a contour in our seat. Now that we've got the shape of our leg, our next step is to smooth out the curve. For that, we'll use the disc sander with a coarse disc in it. We'll use that to grind away these rough ridges left by the sculpting tool and begin to blend the surface and fair the shape of our curve. With the disc sander, we feather and shape all the surfaces that were sculpted with the grinder. The insides and outsides of our legs and the seat as well. Our power tools have done most of the work for shaping the parts for a sitting bench. 
Now we're just going to clean it up a little bit with some hand tools. Now, earlier on when we used the disc sander, it left some hills and some valleys in our stock. So we'll take a straight edge and a pencil. We'll mark out where these high spots are. Now we can come back and level them with these hand tools, like the block plane, the pattern maker's rasp, the shaping tool, and our gooseneck scraper. This will work really well to clean up the form and really finesse the shape a bit. Now we're ready to make the wood smooth and assemble our sitting bench. For the final smoothing and shaping of the parts of our sitting bench, we're going to be using a dual action pneumatic sander. Now we'll start out with some 60 grit and then we'll work our way up to 320. By the time we've gotten to the 320 grit, we will have gotten rid of the coarse scratches and we will really have smoothed and clarified the figure of the wood. We did one last dry fit, just to make sure that our joinery was good before we do our glue up. Now, as you'll recall, earlier we cut a double tenon at the top of our legs. Now the reason that we didn't cut one long tenon is that by cutting this notch in the center, we've actually exposed two more long grain surfaces. Now this is important because we want to match these long grain surfaces to these long grain surfaces inside of our double mortise. Now whenever possible, if you can glue long grain to long grain, that will ensure that you'll get your strongest possible bond. We use some 30 minute epoxy to glue our tenons to our mortises. We want to make sure that the top of our legs are clamped firmly at 90 degrees to the wedge cuts on the bottom of the seat. Next, we use some epoxy to attach a purple heart disc to the side of each leg. For our finish, we're using a blend of linseed oil, tongue oil, and polyurethane. This linseed oil really soaks deeply into the wood and brings out the rich, beautiful depth and character of the grain. The tongue oil and the polyurethane, those are going to sit a little bit more closely to the surface and just give our bench some extra durability. It's the combination of materials and design that gives this sitting bench its soft-spoken grace. The tapered angle and sculpted form of the legs, the gentle curve of the seat, and the universal appeal of the Purple Heart accents come together to create an ambiance that's both exotic and serene. It invites one to stop and take a moment for meditation. To maintain the soft sheen of your sitting bench, just use a little bit of furniture wax now and then and buff it in with a soft cloth. I'm David Marks. Thanks for joining us.